This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to review the BitKey Bitcoin wallet. This is a new hardware wallet and app from Jack Dorsey's block, formerly known as Square. It looks like this. It's a very good looking piece of equipment, uh, pretty high end looking, especially for a Bitcoin wallet. And this thing is still, this hardware wallet is still at the pre-order stage. So I haven't seen it in person or used the product personally. Also not being paid by Block or anyone else to make this video. Now the way this works, you have the BitKey hardware wallet itself, which you pair with the BitKey app on your phone. It uses NFC near field communication to communicate with your phone when you use the hardware wallet to sign a transaction. And BitKey is unusual in that it relies on a two of three multi-sig for signing transactions. So they're basically three keys and under two of three multi-sig you need, the quorum is two out of three. So you need, in order to sign a Bitcoin transaction, you need to sign with two out of those three keys in order to sign a transaction to move your Bitcoin. So there are three keys. One key is stored inside the mobile app on your smartphone. One key is stored inside the hardware wallet itself. And then one key is stored on Block's servers. And the nice thing about this setup, at least theoretically, is that Block cannot steal your Bitcoin because they only hold one key, that key that's on their server. Honest question, is there a way to prove that the key held inside the mobile app can never be accessed by Block? This is an honest question. I'm not sure of the answer. Because if it can, then Block may be able to access two keys and be able to move your Bitcoin. I don't think this is a real concern now, but I do think it could become a concern in the future. And maybe I've just missed it in the documentation, uh, how they document. Uh, maybe this piece is open source or something. So we can tell whether Block has access to the key on your mobile wallet. Now the key on your phone, on your on your mobile, uh, in your mobile app, is also encrypted using actually using that hardware wallet, using the BitKey hardware wallet, and then is backed up to either Google or Apple Cloud. If you lose your phone, this is a nice recovery option. You can download the app on your new phone. You can touch your phone with your BitKey with the hardware wallet, and then the mobile app key will be downloaded from the cloud, decrypted, and restored. So this is made uh, to make it really easy for especially the beginner Bitcoiner. And if you lose your BitKey hardware wallet, you can always buy a new one. You can substitute it back in as a third key using that BitKey app on your phone. This will be followed by a seven day waiting period, that's sort of a precautionary waiting period where you're not allowed to move your Bitcoin. And then after seven days, in the meantime, they'll send you some texts and emails saying, is this really you, etc." If you don't uh, deny that, and if you do nothing after seven days, your funds will be swept from the old multi-sig address to the fresh new multi-sig address that includes your new BitKey hardware wallet. So this is another nice feature. Again, you are trusting Block to do this correctly, uh, but I have no reason to believe uh, that they would do anything malicious, certainly at this point. Now, if you lose access to both your BitKey hardware wallet and your phone and any access to those files stored in the cloud, then there's this social recovery option, which I'll link to later. We'll talk about at the end of this video because it's also kind of a neat thing. Now, BitKey also allows you to spend Bitcoin on the go using their mobile app. And this, in this case, the transactions would be signed by the BitKey server, by Block server, and also by the mobile app, the key on your mobile app to sign transactions. So that would be two out of three signatures. You can also set a threshold, in other words, like a daily spending limit for this, so that if your phone were to get stolen or compromised, the attacker could only drain a certain amount of dollars or Bitcoin or sats from the phone. Now you should obviously store the BitKey hardware wallet itself, this uh, hardware wallet in a secure location. You shouldn't bring it along with you when you go shopping, even though in the video that I'm going to show you at the end, you do see people carrying it around on the subway, etc. It's probably not a good idea, but for the purposes of making a commercial for TV, this is what they decide to do. This is an interesting setup. It's sort of a hybrid between a hot wallet and cold storage because you can still spend out of the BitKey app when you're on the go and when you're shopping, but then you can also use it for cold storage as well. If you're finding this video helpful, I just ask you to help out the channel by hitting the, that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, and also share this video with a friend if you can. So what are my thoughts on BitKey? I think it's wonderful to see a large respected tech company like Block normalizing Bitcoin usage as they've been doing, also creating their own hardware wallet and encouraging self-custody. This is definitely a good thing for Bitcoin adoption. And Block has a huge advertising budget, as we know. And so you can expect to see a lot of ads for this product, as well as their other Bitcoin offerings. Looks like a beautiful and easy to use product as well. Very good for beginners with a nice, clean, 
app interface looks almost like an Apple product, both the hardware wallet and the app. And it's obviously tar targeted at a fairly affluent demographic. These are pre-ordering for $150 a piece, which isn't cheap. It's in the same ballpark as the more advanced cold card MK4, which is definitely better for a more advanced user. This would be more of a beginner wallet, the BitKey would. This heavy solid design as we saw here, I think it's a good reminder and at least from an aesthetic point of view that it's holding something really valuable. These hardware wallets, they don't hold your Bitcoin obviously, but they do hold private keys that you can sign with. And so I think it's nice to have the private keys encased in such a nice aesthetic object. It will definitely appeal to more more affluent demographic, maybe the same type that that uh, buys Apple products as well. Now there's some things I don't like. I don't like the fact that it's missing a screen. And as a result of this, you cannot double check outgoing Bitcoin transaction addresses and also what's included in them, the spending amount, etc. You can only view these outgoing transactions on your phone inside the Bit BitKey app. And if your phone is compromised, if that software on your phone were ever to get compromised, you could have a problem where your Bitcoin is being sent somewhere else. And because you can't double check it on the hardware wallet screen, as you can with a Blockstream Jade or cold card, this is a potential problem and a potential vector of attack. So I wish they had included a screen. I think they were doing some sort of cost benefit analysis here. And at $150, it's already quite expensive. Adding a screen would probably make it closer to $175 or $200. And so they chose the uh, the nice form factor over having a screen. Also, this is a hardware wallet does, that does not run on or use recovery seeds. So when you set it up, they're not going to ask you to write down a 12 word phrase or a 24 word phrase. This is in order to make it a little easier for beginners to Bitcoin who once they have that 12 word list or that 24 word list might not really know what to do with it or how to store it securely. The other problem with this setup, of course, is that block, you really are trusting trusting the parent company. You're not trusting them to not to steal your Bitcoin, but you are trusting them with your privacy because Block gets to watch every transaction that you make. There's this doesn't pretend to be a privacy, a privacy app or a privacy hardware wallet. As I understand it, you have to give them an email or phone number at setup as well. So this is not a device for strong privacy types, but it is a good device for beginners who care less about this thing and just really want to get started with self custody and Bitcoin. I think it's important to remember too that Bitcoin custody is on a spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, you have leaving your Bitcoin on FTX or Coinbase. This is a really, really bad idea as people have learned over the last two years. The In this case, if you leave your Bitcoin on an exchange, as we've covered many times on this channel, the exchange is really holding the keys to those addresses. So you need to ask permission to move your coins off the exchange. You also need to hope that they don't lose or steal them or decide to freeze your account. And lots of people have had their Coinbase accounts, for example, frozen. Sometimes it can take years to get your Bitcoin out if this happens. So that's the problem with leaving your Bitcoin on an exchange. It could also get hacked like happened with Mt. Gox or stolen as happened there. The under, at the other end of the spectrum is do-it-yourself, multi-vendor, geographically distributed multi-sig where you run your own node and you even build your hardware wallets. These are the kind of things I cover in my more advanced course. But somewhere in the middle, we have single sig. We're holding your Bitcoin on a Blockstream Jade or a cold card, as I talk about on this channel. And I hope to have a tutorial up soon on the Blockstream Jade. This is probably the best solution for most people, maybe a bit key when you're really just starting out, or if you're um, maybe more an older demographic. And then, uh, but for hardcore Bitcoiners, you definitely should migrate eventually to single sig or to multi-sig where you don't have collaborative custody as you do with uh, with BitKey. So Bitcoin custody really is a spectrum. And as Bitcoin adoption continues, we're going to see lots of different custody and self-custody solutions, many of which will not pass the most extreme ideals of self-sovereignty that many of you longtime listeners and I share. But I think it's important not to get too toxic about this. Everyone has to start where they are. I started with a Trezor, for example. And so while I'll continue to push as hard as I can on this channel to bring as many people over to the self-sovereignty side of things, as possible, I think we need to face the reality that there are going to be lots of people who are never going to be able to or even want to hold their own private keys or store recovery seeds. Young children, older people, super normies, if you want to call them that, these are the kind of people who are probably not going to ever 
hold their own private keys. And so they're going to need help. Strong Bitcoin or friends or family members, of course, can help out what we call the Uncle Jim model, where you help out your friends or your families, maybe storing some Bitcoin for them or helping them with their setup. But I think products like BitKey are a huge improvement over trusting Sam Bankman Freed or Brian Armstrong with your Bitcoin. So this is the context we have to consider it in, not is it the best hardware wallet or the best form of multisig you could ever have, but will it get people off of exchanges and give them a nice a nice uh, user experience that will encourage them to at least begin get started with self-custody. I think BitKey is a great introductory product to get beginners into the game, and then hopefully many of them will later move on to more self-sovereign products like the Jade or the cold card. And this was sort of the path that I myself took. I think BitKey is a great and accessible solution to the problem of so many people leaving their Bitcoin on exchanges. If you want to dig a little deeper, I will share this article on sharing our recovery design in which they go into exactly how they've thought through this and how the three keys will work, in particular, the social recovery piece. So this would kick in if you lost both your phone and you lost your BitKey hardware device as well. And in order to do an account recovery, what they do, they call it social recovery. So when you set up your BitKey at the beginning, you enroll one or more friends, family members, colleagues as a trusted contact. And then if you ever lose your hardware device and your phone, they will basically block, will contact these people. And there's, there's a cryptographic way that they can check to make sure that you are a trusted contact. I don't want to go into the details here. It's a little bit complicated, but I will link to this in the description notes below. So you can take a look at it as well as I'll link to this ad which is uh, definitely sort of more of a mainstream ad, but it's gonna be, it's interesting to see. You can see people using the BitKey, walking around with it and uh, really popularizing it and hopefully leading to more and more Bitcoin adoption. This is definitely the place we're headed. And I'm grateful to have Jack Dorsey on the Bitcoin team now. Whatever you think of what he did when he was at Twitter, I would encourage you to keep an open mind. I think he's a real Bitcoiner and he really cares for the space. He's been funding a lot of development in the space as well and a lot of companies. And so I'm pleased to see this hardware wallet. Might not be the best hardware wallet for everyone, but I think it is definitely a very good beginner setup self-custody solution. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.